<clears throat> this is going to be a study on the subject of salvation versus discipleship or standing versus state. The subject of the Christian standing in Christ versus his state is something that will help you understand your salvation way better. Your standing in Christ has to do with God seeing you as perfect and sinless ever since the moment you were born again. That's your salvation. It says in Hebrews 10, 14, it says, For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. So the moment you put your trust in the gospel, God sees you as just as righteous as Jesus Christ. However, your state is a lot different. That's your discipleship. It's not your salvation. Your state is however you are living at any given moment. The, bo the born-again believer has two natures. He has a part of him that is a part of the body of Christ, which never sins, and another part of him, his flesh, which still sins because it doesn't get born again. And if a person is saved and he's not giving in to the flesh, and he's doing what the Lord wants him to do, that's good discipleship. Paul says in Philippians, Philippians 3, 11 through 12, If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. So in Christ, Paul was perfect. His soul didn't have any sin applied to it whatsoever because he had been saved. But now his flesh, he, he still knew his flesh was not perfect. It wasn't perfect before. It wasn't perfect after. He still messed up at times and committed sins. He says in Romans, in Romans seven eighteen, For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. So Paul here himself says, In him dwells no good thing in his flesh. So Paul reveals the two natures of the believer many times in his epistles. In 2 Corinthians he talks about how when a Christian dies he is then present with the Lord. In 2 Corinthians 5.8. It says, we are confident, I say, willing rather to be absent from the body than to be present with the Lord. Notice this is referring to your state and not your standing. Paul, a saved man, was presently on earth and absent from the Lord. That's in the flesh. However, spiritually speaking, he was already up in heaven. Because in Ephesians 2, 5, and 6, it says, Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So when it comes to your standing in Christ, you are already in heaven. However, when it comes to your state, you are still on this earth in a sinful body, Something else, when you are saved, you are automatically baptized into Jesus Christ. And this has nothing to do with water baptism. Galatians 3.27 says, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. However, in your flesh, you later get water baptized to show what took place inside. When it comes to your standing in Christ, you're baptized into Christ. Outwardly, later on, most likely you were water baptized, and that would have to do with your state. It would have to do with your discipleship and not your salvation. Water baptism has nothing to do with your salvation. As a good portion of people teach, it has to do with your discipleship. That's showing you're a disciple. There's a difference between salvation, the fact that you're Born again, saved and going to heaven, and discipleship, the fact that you're living right or not living right. When it comes to my standing in Christ, I am an adopted son of God. 
In Romans 8, 15, it says, For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. So I'm a, an adopted son of God when it comes to my standing in Christ. However, when it comes to my state, I'm waiting on the adoption. In Romans 8, 23, it says, And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Once I get my glorified body at the rapture, I am no longer going to have to worry about sin ever again. I'm waiting for the redemption of my body, when it will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye when Jesus Christ comes to get us at the rapture. That's when it comes to my state. See, right now I have this sinful body of flesh. At the rapture, I'm getting a new body. My state will then completely, 100% match my standing. Both will be sinless. My standing right now is sinless in Christ because I have the Lord's righteousness. My flesh is another story. It still sins. And that's my state. But at the rapture, I'm getting a new body. So my state will be as righteous as my standing. Here is why your standing in Christ is perfect. You have been quickened. That is, made alive. You've been born again. Ephesians 2, 1 and 2. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Before salvation you were dead in trespasses and sins. You needed to be born again and made alive through believing the gospel. You were an enemy of God and you were not in Christ. You were, were definitely not a child of God. But at salvation, you are born again and made alive. You are no longer a sinner in the hands of an angry God. John 3.36 lets us know the wrath of God abideth on the sinner. Now that you're saved, you are in Christ and no longer under his wrath. 1 Corinthians 12.27 says, Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Before salvation, your standing was in your own wicked flesh with your own filthy works that were never going to be good enough. You were on your way to hell. Now, after salvation, your standing is in Christ and you're on your way to heaven. So your spirit, it's been born again. That's your standing in Christ. The flesh is dead and you need to reckon it dead, as Paul says. That's why he says, I die daily. Every moment you need to try your best not to give in to your sinful flesh. When you do give in to the flesh, you're just serving a dead corpse because it's dead. Col Colossians 2.10 says, And you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. So your standing is complete in him. Your standing in Christ is as perfect and complete as the Son of God. Your standing in Christ is also sinless because of the spiritual circumcision. One of the greatest subjects in the Bible is the spiritual circumcision, which you don't hear a handful of preachers talk about today because they don't even know about it. Colossians 2, 11 through 13, In whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. See, before you were saved, every time you sinned, those sins were applied to your soul because your soul was still stuck to your flesh. For this reason, your soul would have went to hell if you died that way. But at salvation, God performed an operation called the circumcision made without hands. When he, spiritually speaking, cut your soul loose from your sinful flesh, now, when you mess up in sin in the flesh, 
those sins aren't applied to your soul like they were before you were saved. Let me say that again. Before you were saved, your soul was stuck to your sinful flesh. Every time you sinned, those sins were not only in the flesh, they were on your soul. After salvation, and the moment you get saved, the Lord cut your soul loose from your flesh. And now after salvation, those sins don't touch your soul anymore. This is one of the things that makes your standing in Christ be as sinless as God himself. When God looks at you, he sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ because he took the sin away and then any time you sin in the flesh, it wasn't applied back to your soul. But your flesh isn't perfect. And this is what makes your state unequal to your standing. Because your state has to do with how you're living at any given moment. But we should try our best to get our state to resemble our standing, which is sinlessly perfect. We should try to get it to match it as much as we can. And if you're staying in unconfessed sin and giving into the flesh, your state isn't good, but this doesn't affect your standing as a sinless son of God. Your state constantly changes. How you're living at any given moment constantly changes. Your standing never changes. And you know that verse the, the holiness crowd always throws at you to make you think you have to be sinlessly perfect to make it to heaven. Where it says in 1 John 3, 9, Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. The new man inside you that came in when you were saved doesn't sin. He is sinlessly perfect. It is what is inside the believer that's born of God, not his flesh. That's how he explained that verse. Whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. That's the new man. It's not your flesh. Your flesh doesn't get born again. My flesh isn't born of God. It stays wicked until you, I get that new body at the rapture. In 1 Corinthians 15, it talks about us getting glorified bodies at the rapture. And it says we shall all be changed. All of these guys teaching a changed life is required for salvation. Who are looking for outward evidence that a person is saved. They need to realize the flesh won't be changed until the rapture. And to the rapture, you will be capable of any sin and capable of living like the devil unless you yield to the Holy Spirit. Not only this, but if you're saved, then you are joined to the Lord. 1 Corinthians six seventeen says, But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. So you're joined to the Lord Jesus Christ. You are bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. If you go to hell, then Jesus has to go to hell. If you are a part of Christ and Christ is sinless, then the part of you that is born again is also sinless. And you are standing in Christ and your standing in Christ is as a perfect saint. Your flesh, which has to do with your state, is not joined into the Lord. For the born-again Christian, in the sense of going to hell and suffering for sins, he is no longer responsible for suffering for the sins he commits because of his standing in Christ. Jesus Christ paid for all those sins on the cross. The born-again believer will suffer for sins in this life and the flesh if he lives in a horrible, sinful state. But whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. His sin on earth doesn't affect his salvation, but it can affect his rewards and inheritance. You know the verse in Revelation that men throw at you to prove you can lose your salvation? That verse that says in Revelation 21.8, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. They will say, if you tell a lie, you will go to hell and lose your salvation. This isn't true because our standing in Christ is perfect. Even if we committed the sins in the verse, God sees us as sinless sons of God. A Christian may tell a lie in the flesh. Of course, you've told a lie since you've been saved. It says, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. If you told a lie after you were saved, does that mean you lose your salvation and you go to hell? No, it doesn't, because the new man doesn't commit sin, and the sins aren't applied to the soul. 
This is why it, it is possible for a Christian to sin and still go to heaven. It's, it's your, your new man versus the old man. It's standing versus state. It's salvation versus discipleship. Me not telling a lie has nothing to do with my salvation. That has to do with my discipleship. My salvation has to do with one day I knew I was a sinner. I knew I was going to hell. And I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ to be my crucified, buried, and risen Savior. That's my salvation. That's when it was settled. And everything I've done from that moment on had nothing to do with my salvation. It had to do with my discipleship. It had to do with my state. How I was living at any given moment. It had nothing to do with that decision I made ten years ago to get saved by believing the gospel. Nothing I did good and nothing I did bad affected my salvation in any way. The good things I did didn't keep my salvation. The bad things I did didn't take away my salvation. Those things have to do with my discipleship. And if you can get that down, then you're not going to doubt your salvation anymore. You see, the, the more you concentrate on the things that you're doing, the more you're going to rely on your works for your salvation. You want to rely on what the Lord Jesus did for you. He did all the work. Not you. You didn't do any work. You just believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. So you have a standing in Christ and you have a state. They are two different things. Your standing in Christ is fixed and settled and can never be changed. Your state changes every day. If you're doing good today and living right, your state matches your standing more than it does on a day when you got in the flesh and did something wicked. Your flesh was not born again. This is what you need to understand. The flesh serves the law of sin. In Romans 7, 25, it says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. The Bible refers to it as the wretched man, the outward man, the old man, the natural man. And this sinful flesh won't be changed until the rapture. The new man in you does not sin. It can't sin. The old man, your sinful flesh, desires to sin constantly, and Christians can give in to their sinful flesh. The new man has the fruits of the Spirit, while the flesh does the works of the flesh. And they're listed in Galatians chapter 5. Things like adultery, variance, witchcraft, emulations, wrath, strifes, heresies. And it's possible for a Christian to commit these sins. But they won't be applied to his soul. When a Christian commits the works of the flesh, then his state is unholy and wicked and sinful. And if a Christian is living right and trying to do what the Bible says, then his state will be closer to matching his standing, which is sinlessly perfect. However, since our flesh is wicked, a Christian state will never be perfect until the rapture. But even now, when Jesus Christ sees me, in the eternal sense, when Jesus Christ sees me, he doesn't see my sins. He sees the righteousness of Jesus Christ. He sees the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. If I sin, he sees it, but he doesn't count it to my record. I have the righteousness of Jesus Christ imputed to my soul. If I continue in sin, he will chasten me and cause me trouble, but my position in Christ as a son of God never changes, and he is not going to put me in hell when I am a part of Christ's body. The sin I commit and my sinful flesh doesn't go to heaven. The Bible even says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. I need a new body. Not only this, but the Bible says the Holy Spirit has sealed me unto the day of redemption. So I'm sealed and no one can break my seal and nothing can take my soul. Our standing in Christ is that we are sealed and the devil himself can't break the seal. Nothing can touch my soul because the Holy Spirit sealed me and the devils can't touch my soul. A Christian can't be devil-possessed in the sense that a devil is indwelling him and has a hold of his soul. But a devil can possess his sinful flesh. See, that's another difference. Standing 
versus state. The devil can't get my soul. He can't get that which is perfect. Sinlessly perfect, I mean. But he can get my flesh because it's not born again. It's not saved. That is why the fornicator is turned over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. So my standing in Christ isn't affected by devils. But my state can be affected by the devil and devils. 1 John 3, 8 says, He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For the, this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. You have committed sin since you have been saved. Are you of the devil? Your flesh is, but your standing in Christ is perfect. It isn't the new man in you committing sin, it's your flesh the old man which commits sin. Our standing is made possible because Jesus Christ died for us and we got in Christ by believing the gospel. Our state is based on our walk with God from day to day. Colossians 2, 6, As ye have therefore received Jesus Christ Jesus our Lord, so walk ye in him. If you walk in the Spirit, you won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. But many times we end up walking in the flesh. Paul says, let not therefore, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that she, ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. So if you yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, then your state isn't going to come close to matching your standing. If you yield yourselves unto God, then your state will be a lot closer to matching your standing in Christ. But you will never attain sinless perfection without a glorified body that you get at the rapture. Because Psalms 39, 5 says, For man at his best state is altogether vanity. Your state will never affect your standing, which is fixed, but it will affect your rewards in heaven. It will affect your joy and your fellowship with God. But since your position is fixed in Christ, your relationship as a son of God can't change. Your salvation is fixed, it's settled. Your discipleship's up to you. Are you going to yield yourself to the Holy Spirit's leading or yield yourself to the desires of the flesh? That has to do with your discipleship, not salvation. If you don't acknowledge your standing versus your state, if you don't acknowledge salvation versus discipleship, you're going to make the Bible contradict itself. Galatians 3.27 says, For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have, have put on Christ. We all have been baptized into Christ as salvation. That's our standing. But Romans 13, 14 says, But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to the lust thereof. Even though you have put on Christ when you were saved, practically speaking, you have to put on Christ from day to day to keep yourself living right, so that your state isn't unholy and wicked, so that you're acting like a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul talks to the Philippians about knowing their state. In Philippians 2.19, it says, But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. He gets comfort in knowing they're living right and walking with God because he knows it's possible for Christians to walk according to the course of this world just like Demas did. Demas' state was unholy and worldly. In 2 Timothy 4.10, it says, For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world. However, he was saved, so his standing in Christ was still a child of God. But that verse showed his state was wicked. But in Philemon verse 24, Paul calls him a fellow laborer. And there, his state is good. Your state changes. Your standing does not change. Your salvation changes doesn't change your discipleship changes your standing has everything to do with jesus christ and his righteousness your state has to do with you and your righteousness that that is why your works good or bad 
have absolutely nothing to do with your salvation. Have you ever heard the song, He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be? God isn't working on the new man. It's already perfect. You have to work on the old man and beating it down daily. You need to be striving daily to get your state to match your standing. And all the men who teach a changed life is required for salvation are looking on the outside at the person's state and they don't realize they can't see the Christian standing in Christ. So the way God sees a person is different from the way man sees a person. You see a person in his state, which changes, and can be good, and it can be bad or unholy, and it can be counterfeited. A lost man can, can do the right things in front of you and make you think he's saved. But he, he can't he can't make himself his standing in Christ be perfect without being born again so it's like this you, your salvation has to do with you believing the gospel the things you did before you were saved and the things you did after you were saved whether they be good or bad those things are a complete separate issue they have nothing to do with your salvation whatsoever the things you do, good or bad, have nothing to do with your salvation. It's all about what Jesus did. He finished the work. You believed. Now it's up for you to be a disciple and start living right every day the best way you know how. Because you want to please the Lord. Not to keep salvation. And not because you're worried about losing salvation. Just because you want to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. So this has been your standing versus your state or salvation versus discipleship.